been searching for flying saucers for three months without any luck at all. Hmm. Maybe I need a bigger telescope. Though you have seen some weird stuff that you thought were UFOs. So, one little mistake. Big deal. Don't feel bad. 90% of all UFO sightings turn out to be helicopters. Or their lenticular clouds. Or the planet Venus. Why so interested in UFOs, little brother? Want to be the first to communicate with life forms from other worlds? No, I want to learn everything about aliens, so when they land, I'm ready. To fight them before they take over our planet! But what if the aliens have 12 arms? And ginormous mouths! And disintegrator breath! That's exactly why I need to be ready. Bring it on, alien scum! <laughs> <laughs> I told you there's no such thing as aliens! Wait, what is that? Uh, uh, uh. A UFO! No, I think it's a comet! Wait, no tail! Must be an asteroid! A solar body made of rock and metal that orbits the sun? Wow! Uh, why is it coming closer? If it's a meteor, it'll just burn up in our atmosphere. <gasps> Unless it's a meteorite! <laughs> Think the aliens threw it at us? collision between two asteroids, like all meteorites. Let's take it back to the lab for analysis. Isn't it cool? It came from outer space. You think it's radioactive? Nah, meteorites are no more radioactive than rocks on Earth. What are you going to name your find? Let's call it Bernice. JD, to give it a proper scientific name, we must first determine what it is composed of. Ah, exactly 2.9 pounds. laced with some unknown component that shows only in ultraviolet light. Let me take a closer look. My, My turn. You are like a rocket machine. Relax. Don't tell a guy who's allergic to rodent hair to... <laughs> Relax. Someone catch that mobile allergen disaster! From Manadite. <laughs> oh, I guess we failed to determine what the meteorite is made of. No, no, no. You haven't failed. You just found a lot of ways that don't work. It all depends on how you look at it. Of course. J.D. said the unknown component shows in UV light. What if we exposed it to ultraviolet radiation? Slowly, of course. <laughs> oh, no! No worries. Pookie is fine. Pookie? We should call him a pesky. How about Butch? Or how about Dash, the nickname of my first son, Thomas Jr.? Uh-huh. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Dash it is. There. All safe and... <laughs> <gasps> what 
just caused Dash to have a spontaneous growth spurt. <laughs> the real question is, how long before Kent realizes he just shot himself in the vacuum chamber? Answer, 5.2 seconds. Now, can we focus on the real problem? Dash just ate our crystal chamber. <laughs> there goes my kinetoscope. Woo! Oh no, not my comic book collection. <laughs> uh, got him. <laughs> if Dash keeps growing, our lab is next to go bust. <laughs> You guys go after Dash. Kent and I will try to find a solution to the growth spurts. We need to learn about unusual growth spurts in rodents. Sheila has a hamster. How could you possibly know that? Because I, uh, kind of, sort of, sent it to her to make her like me. Well, at least you didn't send candy in a heart-shaped box. Bonjour, Kent. Merci for the candy. Oh, mon dieu, what happened to the secret lab? Let's just say we have a new pet. Then we looked at it under a very strong UV light. Oh, UV radiation can cause many biological effects. Like making an animal grow? Mais oui, I think you're dealing with a mutation. A mutation, right. And the best scientist to speak to about mutations is Seymour Benzer. Seymour Benzer. Got it. We'll be back in 16 minutes. Ah, new students. Just in time to taste my new recipe, chocolate fondue a la Kazu Marzu. <laughs> you a stupid question? Of course. As I've often said, ask stupid questions and you often get amazing answers. Can UV light turn a guinea pig into a monster? <laughs> of course. Theoretically. Imagine this tasty little cheese ball is a cell in your body. Each cell holds DNA, genetic information that determines your eye color, your hair color, even the size of your ears. Exposure to chemicals or radiation like ultraviolet light can change the DNA and change the cell, resulting in a mutation. Mmm, delicious. How fast can a mutation take place? Cell mutations take many years, unless something speeds up the process. The meteorite! It must have sped up the mutation effect! Causing Dash's growth spurts! I have no idea what you just said, young lady, but as I always say, follow your instincts. Thank you! Kent. What we need is to invent a device to reverse the mutation. Well, to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Well, we sure got the junk part covered. There must be a way to reverse the UV effect in combination with the unknown element of the meteorite. Gives me an idea. JD, we have a solution, I hope. Where are you? We're at 41 degrees north, 74 degrees west. Wow.
won't even tickle him. <laughs> May I suggest we find a, a, a less furry mascot like a test tube? Uh, I better stock up on allergy pills. <laughs> 